Before this episode even starts, bro, go follow me on Instagram. I have like, I think I'm on like 15,070 something followers. If I drop below 15K, I'll actually take my own life and it'll be your fault directly. This is not a joke. This is serious. Suicide is coming. If I drop below 15K, suicide is coming. Go follow me on Instagram and then you can turn off notifications for me so that you never see my content. But just make sure the 15K doesn't drop. It's the only thing that gives my life meaning right now. <laughs> okay, let's get into the episode, man. Let's go. Bow, 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 bow. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to about as raw as keeping it raw is gonna get. Money Bag Matters Live. You know that I bring the vibes. What's good with it? What's up? Henny Bottles, one of them back today because it's downstairs from my trip to a chic store and I still need to wipe it before I put it back and I'm too lazy to do so. Have about a quarter bottle left. Today, we're covering three topics. The first one is cancel culture. Second one is can you be friends with your ex? And the last one is. Chakra Huns. I don't know what order I'm going to do them in. Let's kick it off. Okay, so first one, cancel culture. I, sh- I actually spoke about this on my live the other day, right? I feel very passionately about cancel culture. What is cancel culture for those of you living under a rock who don't know? I would say that cancel culture became popular last year when TikTok blew up because of COVID. Theoretically, it's the community coming together to kick somebody off the internet for something that they've done historically or are currently doing. I think that initially there was probably a good sentiment behind it. So if someone had been racist, for example, there should be consequences. If someone, this was just recently performed TikToks with a stillborn baby, they should probably not be on the internet anymore. So that's what cancel culture started out as. What it's turned into is a bunch of 14-year-olds with no life experience that as soon as you say something that they don't agree with, you're done. In their heads, you're done. Now, I saw someone on um, Backchat London, a YouTube series. This woman put it very nicely. She said that cancel culture in reality doesn't really exist unless you have power. So, for example, I think um, this British artist Wiley said something about Jewish people. And uh, Jews hold a lot of power in a, in a lot of cities in the world. And apparently, he got taken off, like, business things, stuff like that. For example, another example is David Dobrik. David Dobrik um, lost all his sponsors and had to step down from the board of, of the app that he was creating because of some things that had happened in his vlog, like, four Four years prior. My problem with cancel culture is people who have no basis for their claims, who just jump in head first as soon as they see something that disagrees with their outlook on life. And the problem with that is that if you're 14, your outlook on life is very limited. But 14 year olds run the internet, maybe even younger. All these mandem are so young on the internet. All these little girls and boys are riding around on the internet going crazy, thinking that their opinion means everything. And it doesn't. It really, really doesn't. That's what it boils down to at the end of the day. I uploaded a TikTok the other day. I'll play it right now. Spare me. Niggas think I'm fighting to save the day. But really, nigga, I just like to fight. I uploaded this the night of the England game. Is it insensitive? Yes. Did people get hurt because of racism and domestic violence in the UK? Yes. People also got hurt in the Holocaust. People make Holocaust jokes all the time. People died in 9-11. People make 9-11 jokes all the time. People have probably died in the Durban riots. People are consistently making jokes about the Durban riots. Me and my boy who lives in Durban is from Durban. Laugh every day about what's happening in Durban. Why? Because that's where our sense of humor lies. Is it insensitive? Yes. Some people enjoy insensitive humor. If you go to my TikTok, because I didn't have it taken down, it got removed for hate speech because a bunch of these 12 year olds decided to report it. I appealed it. It got unbanned. It's back on my page. Because you see, the thing is, I keep the same energy. I'm not finna buckle for a bunch of toddlers. That is my sense of humor. You as an individual person in this world are perfectly entitled to not find it funny. You don't have to find it funny. You see, these people in the comments are like, this is unacceptable. You need to apologize. Why did two and a half thousand people like it? Isn't it weird that there are some people who have a difference of opinion to you? Like, oh, this is not me talking to you guys, by the way. This is me talking to the haters or the the cancel culture or whatever. Is it so surprising that someone has a different opinion to you? Oh, someone found something funny that you don't? Like, it's okay. You see, the difference is between someone like me, who has an actual perspective on life, and some of these clowns that just go around taking things completely out of proportion and losing their minds over everything. Is If I see something I don't like, not even like I have a problem with it, I just don't really find it funny. Say I'm on TikTok and I see a black girl make a joke about how white people have no flavor, or like the colonizers have no flavor, they can't dance, they have no source. Unless the joke is like really well done. Like, if it's well done, then... It might be funny, but maybe I don't find it funny. Maybe I'm like, oh, okay, it's kind of played out. I've heard this a thousand times before. You know what I do? You know what I do? I just don't double tap the video and I keep scrolling because I have my own life. I've touched grass before. I felt the warm embrace of a woman in my life before. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like the difference between me and someone else is that someone else comes across my TikTok and they're personally affected by it. They don't just not like it and continue throughout their day. They're there in my comments. 
crying. This is highly insensitive. You know, bruh. bruh. This is something I never understand. Let's take my TikTok about racism and domestic violence. Do you think by me posting that, hmm, the racist gents from the football stadium are on my TikTok like, yeah, uh-huh. This is validating our actions. Do you think that if I posted something like racism is wrong, domestic abuse is wrong, don't do that. The racist gents and the domestic abusers from the stadium are on my TikTok like, damn, this random white kid from SA I've never seen before spitting facts, you know? Maybe I shouldn't beat my wife. Maybe I shouldn't be racist. Maybe I shouldn't prejudice someone based off the color of their skin. No, bruh. That's not going to change a damn Thing. On the other hand, there are some people, any culture, race, color, skin color on the on the planet that deal with trauma by laughing about it. If I scroll through the likes of that TikTok, there are all different types of people that are liking the content because some people laugh about things. And if that's not you, that's okay. But your opinion isn't the end of the world. Get me. No one cares what you're saying. Just go about your life, man. People really just deep things too much, bro. Anyways, I got a bit passionate for a second, but I guess my summarizing point is this. Cancel culture isn't real unless people who can actually have an effect on your life have that effect on your life. And, um, Go touch some grass. That's my final summarizing point on cancel culture. Flipping top. Okay, the next one is being friends with your ex. I got like two questions on that. Probably a couple more. No. No. This piece of advice is real, real simple. No, you cannot, bro. What are you doing? What are you doing being friends with your ex? You can be friends with your ex if you don't have a current partner. Think about it like this, bro. You're diabetic. Sugar's bad for you. So you cut off the sugar, right? There's a reason why you cut off the sugar. It's bad for you. The sugar's your ex for those of you slow pokes who are not following. If you are now on a healthy diet and, 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 and your life is going better, would you go to sleep at night with a, with a stash of sweets next to your bed? Hmm? Would you keep that sugar that's bad for you easily accessible for whenever you want? No, because that just increases the level of temptation for you to backtrack into your unhealthy ways. Why would you keep your ex hovering around your life? It also breeds jealousy in your current relationship because if I have a woman and her ex hangs out with her separately and alone and they've had sexual intimacy before, am I a dumbass? Am I an actual coconut? Am I a donut? Am I a doorknob? Am I a doorframe? Huh? You actually deserve to get cheated on if you're allowing that. I'm not gonna lie. That's not a controlling thing. That's just a mutual respect thing and it's an intelligence thing, bro. Humans are feeble. Humans are weak. We are weak-willed. If I'm trying to eat healthy and I have a chocolate bar on my desk, it's getting eaten. You can be like, oh, I'm different. Me and my ex have a completely different relationship. Okay. Okay. Wait till you and your boyfriend or you and your girlfriend are having a fight. And then your friend, your very close friend that just happens to be someone that used to be inside of you is like, hey, I can be your shoulder to cry on. Watch, bro. There are people who are listening to what I'm saying and have been through what I've already described and they're like, yep, Matt's preaching. And there are people who haven't been through it yet and they're like, nah, can't be that bad. Just wait, bro. Just wait. Wait till you have a fight and then tell me who hits up your line first. Tell me who hits up your line first. And then when you're hitting three rounds in a bedroom while your other partner is crying. And if you're the other partner, you deserve to cry, bro, because you saw it coming. So don't complain to me. Yeah, this is what this is what keeping a roll is going to be from now on, bro. I don't have time to make notes to make sure everyone's happy with the points that I'm making. These are the points that I'm making, bro. Swallow them. No spitting. Um, ooh, swallow them, but I'm spitting. That's hard, bro. I don't really lie. I need to work on that, though. But that could be a thing. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping a Roll, where I spit and you swallow. Eee! That's hard, bro. When I spit and you swallow. But pause, though, for the homies that are listening. Okay, anyway. What's the last one? Chakra hunts. Chakra hunts. Okay, so this is like the social definition for a chakra hunt. It's basically girls who are guided by light, energy, signs. Um, They're very into horoscopes and like destiny and like they have that ting on their wall bruh we've spoken about it a hundred thousand times you know the ting the the flipping with the tings bro you know y'all know what a chakra hunt is they are the best worst thing that can ever happen to your life i'm talking to my homies right now they are the unhealthiest habit but they feel so good chakra hunts will have you tripping balls chakra hunts have had me and tebs i'm gonna do a chakra hunt episode with tebs I have to when we meet up again, but he will tell you as well. They're always the finest. They are always the finest. Chakra hands are so fine, it's crazy. Their confidence levels are off the chart. Now, here's why they're so dangerous, right? They switch feelings like this because they're, they're like I said, they're moved by like energy and, and some other powers that you as a man are not party to. You do not understand. You cannot comprehend. They are not guided by logic and reason. They are guided by energy and feeling. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the problem is that a chakra hunt will love you, love you one day and just 
know that, and I'm quoting, she'll just know that you're not the right guy for her the next day. The next day. That's how it works with, with, with chakra hands. And the thing is like, it's like a roller coaster where you don't know where the ride stops, but you never want to get off. Oh my Lord, bro. Chakra hands will, will have you feeling like the greatest man on the planet and then the biggest bum in the world that's just how they operate bro it's it's mad they're a different breed of human being <sighs> many a time i have enjoyed that ride and i've gone deep before <laughs> no but for real like i've i've gone um not that deep yes that deep but also i've gone far with them before and it's it's horrible bro it's horrible when they drop you off when the ride stops <sighs> What I would say about chakra hands is you need to be very stable as a man before you enter a committed relationship or not even a committed, but like a, if you're serious about her, don't be. She will break your heart. She will break your heart. She will break your heart. I know I sound biased, like, because I've gone through it before, like, but bro, if you don't believe me, it's okay. Don't take my words of advice and then text me when it happens to you. <laughs> But also, I become way more interested in a girl where she, like, baits me along. Do you know what I'm saying? When she is interested and then she pretends like she's not, she makes me double think whether she is or not. But then there's a difference between that and girls who are just not interested in you. Like, who just stop being interested in you. Like, they were and then they weren't. I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but have you ever had that happen and then you still remember the times when they were? So then that's what's messing up your decision-making capabilities and then it's late. Anyways, that's enough for today's episode of Keeping It Raw. Uh, drop down other topics you want me to talk about. Don't cry about every little thing. Everything's finna be alright. Cancel culture is for clowns. <laughs>